For project three, you're going to be recreating your flow form from your foundations class. The flow form was taking and blending together a series of profiles to get one smooth organic shape. In SOLIDWORKS, the command we use to do this is called the loft command. This video will serve as an explanation for all the requirements for your project, as well as acting as a tutorial for an example file that you've been provided. The example file includes a completed tutorial file, as you see here, with all the steps numbered, and a starter file that includes scanned in images of your flow form, a front layout sketch, a top layout sketch, and a plane locator sketch, which will be used to control the location of evenly spaced planes that the profiles for the loft will be drawn upon. I will work from the starter file to demonstrate the process. I'll go ahead and hide the scanned in images because we already have layout sketches that are drawn for us, leaving us the front view layout, the top view layout, and this plane locator sketch. First thing I want to do is create a series of planes that are going to be evenly spaced in a line with the front and the end of the loft. I've already been provided with a sketch in step five, which is a series of lines drawn end to end and made equal so that the endpoints are evenly spaced apart from each other. What I'm going to do is create a series of planes through these points that will be parallel to my right plane. So my first reference is the right plane. The next reference will be one of the points in my plane controlling sketch or plane locator sketch. And continue this process until I get all five additional planes that will be spaced evenly apart. Here's what it looks like with all of the separate planes. These are steps 6A through 6E on the completed file. On YouTube, on my channel, you can find a video that explains in more detail how to use a layout or locator sketch in order to evenly space your planes. You have to use this method or another video that I show in the event that you need to have some angled planes to control the location of all of your profile planes to make your loft. One of these two methods must be used for this particular homework assignment. The next step involves creating a 3D curve that is a combination of the front view of this middle curve here and the top view of this curve here. These two curves in these different views actually represent the same three-dimensional curve just seen in different views. We somehow have to combine these together to form one three-dimensional curve. In order for this to work properly, both curves have to be the same length in the X direction from the nose to the tail of the loft. The method we're going to use is called projected curve, and that's found on insert curve projected. But before we can do that, what we want to do is make copies of the appropriate curves from our layout sketches. To make copies, we have to make new sketches. So on the front plane, we will start a new sketch. We want to copy this middle curve, which I call the outboard curve in the completed file and we make a copy of it using the convert entities command. So we see when we copy this edge, it gives us an on edge relation and the edge is black. We're just copying that one curve, finishing the sketch. On the top plane, we make a new sketch, copy this curve, and again finish the sketch. To combine these together into a single 3D curve, go to insert curve projected, and we select the two sketches that we just created. These then combine together in a single 3D curve while still keeping our top layout and our front layout preserved at the top of the feature tree. This is represented by steps 7, 8, and 9 in the completed tutorial file. We also want to make a sketch that contains nothing but this top curve and, a, and yet another sketch that contains nothing but this bottom curve. Once again, we'll create new sketches. 
on the front plane. And I'll just select this one curve, use Convert Entities to copy it, and finish that sketch. A brand new sketch on the front plane again. Copy the bottom curve from the front layout sketch. Convert Entities, finish the sketch. And I will hide my layouts to show a separate sketch that represents the top guide, separate for the bottom guide, and a curve for the outboard guide. You're now ready to draw profiles on each of these profile planes. The first profile is going to be nothing more than a point where all three curves come together. The same will be true of the last profile. To do this, we'll just select the right plane sketch on it, draw a single point. We will make a pierce relation between this point and the upper guide curve. We can choose any of the three curves in this case because they all meet at the same point. I'll just be consistent, use the top guide curve, so I'll pre-select holding control and choose pierce. We want to use pierce, we don't want to use the coincident relation when we are attaching profiles to guide curves. Drawing on the plane number one, we need to have a vertical line that spans from here to here and we will have a pierce from this point to this curve and from this point to this curve. This line has to be a straight vertical line because when we make our loft we want to have a flat face on our front plane. Then I need to make a line that connects this curve to the outboard curve and this bottom curve also to the outboard curve. If you look at the tutorial file I just used, you can make whatever shape you want for the, for the tutorial. But what I did was a two-point spline making a pierce to, to this outboard. And then I just dragged out the spline handles. So you can do whatever you desire here. And then I need to add one more spline going from this point to this point and again dragging out the spline handles. For this assignment, I want you to make sure that there's a little bit of a ridge at the top and bottom of the profiles. Don't make these handles perfectly horizontal because when we create the loft, I want to create a subtle ridge running from nose to tail at the top and the bottom in a, in a later exercise we will learn how to make our profiles in such a way that we can blend everything together nicely. So we continue to make profiles on the subsequent planes all the way down to the tail in order to use those for our loft. Those profiles are shown as steps 12A through 12F in the completed tutorial file. At this point then you should have a sketch which represents the top guide, a sketch which is the bottom guide, a projected curve which is the outboard guide, and a series of profile sketches that run from nose to tail and have pierce relations to all three guides. Here we see the symbol for the pierce relation. Again, these cannot be coincident relations but must be pierce relations because we are making relation to a curve which is passing through or piercing through the sketch plane. Now of all the elements needed to make our loft. Select loft and you might have difficulty selecting this point at the tip because so many things converge at this spot so what you can do is select it from the feature tree and then subsequent profiles you can select from the graphics window. This is done while the profile box is highlighted. The last one I'm going to select from the feature tree again. And if for some reason you get a twist in these, you can always drag the little green connecting dots to make sure the corresponding corners are all connected together. Now I highlight the guide curves box and I want to select 
my outboard curve, my top guide, and my bottom guide. And that will complete the loft. This surface should be a perfectly flat surface. One way to check this is simply click on it and see if you can make a sketch on it. As long as you can make a sketch, which will occur when this symbol pops up, then you know that this surface is perfectly flat. If you cannot make a sketch on this surface, it means something has gone wrong and this surface has a ripple in it. If that occurs, go back and check to make sure that your profiles all have straight lines on the front plane and that you're also using this upper guide and this lower guide. If you're missing a guide, it's likely that the surface will not be flat. To finish this exercise, we just need to mirror the other side. We can choose the surface as the mirror plane, and the feature we're going to mirror is the only solid feature that is in our feature tree, which is the loft, and this should allow us to make a mirror in a single solid. In some cases you might have a case where depending on the complexity of this you might have a strange anomaly occur where it will not allow you to make the mirror by selecting the loft feature. I'm not quite sure why this always occurs but if that gives you a problem and it says that it cannot make the mirror instead select bodies to mirror and the only body we have here is again our loft, so just select the body instead and make sure that Merge Solids is selected. And that will give you the same result if the other method failed. This shows how to do both a tutorial and your own personal project, but some of your projects might have a more complicated shape like this one that does not proceed in a general horizontal direction. In this case you cannot use a layout sketch for the planes as I showed you before, that would give even spacing because the planes in this case for the profiles need to be tilted at various angles to proceed in the general direction of the loft. Then what you need is a layout sketch that looks more like this, where here we see planes that can be vertical in this zone but have to be tilted at different angles as the loft bends upward. And if you search under the Jam and Design channel, you'll find a video called controlling angled planes with sketches and that's the technique you will, you will have to use on your own personal project to achieve this sort of effect. Now remember for your own personal project your front view sketch and your top view sketch have to be the same length in the x-axis. Also you need to use some sort of a locator sketch in order to locate your planes what you should not do is simply create planes by selecting the right plane and giving an offset dimension to create each subsequent plane or creating a series of planes using this method because there will be no parametric relation between the planes and the total length of your loft or your layout. By using a plane layout sketch your plane locations and spacing will be parametrically linked to the length of your loft. Also make sure that all of your guide curves start on the first profile plane and finish on the last profile plane. You cannot have any guide curves that start somewhere in the middle and end somewhere in the middle. Finally, make sure every profile has a vertical straight line, not a spline, going from the top guide to the bottom guide actually doesn't have to be vertical, it will automatically be so once you add a pierce relation to the top guide and the bottom guide. And also make sure that your upper curve here and your lower curve here have a pierce relation to your outboard guide which is created using the projected curve command.